Hello everyone, this is Carlos and today I'm going to be talking about how you can start analyzing your power curve, the mountain, your power application. In this video, you're going to be learning about what a power curve looks like, which you will be able to compare with yours, and what are those numbers under the power curve that talk about the power curve that are ideal. So to start with that, I'm going to be rowing on the RP3 and you're going to see what I'm rowing. I'm going to be drawing different power curves. Some are good, some are not good, but you're going to be seeing different shapes. So that's going to show you the power of the direct feedback of the RP3 as I'm doing it, how I can change that shape. And I recommend you, you play with it and try to do the same thing. As you could see when I was rowing, I was able to draw different power curves, different mountains in a very similar technique and very similar rowing. So there were moments where my power application in the handle and feet were changing and were drawing a different curve, very different, and you couldn't really see it that much. So it's a very, very accurate precision mountain. So here we have in this board, we have six examples on different power curve, different mountains. So let's see that you have rode, I haven't seen your power curve, and now we wanna compare your power curve with what you've seen as an ideal mountain that will be number one, and then uh, what are you missing, and then we can talk about it. So number one will be um, kind of an ideal. You could see we have right height, and we side the right length, and we have like a good thickness that was the joules per strokes, and talk on the power curve tutorial. The second one you could see, it has a good build through the power curve, so good coordination at the catch and good build uh, on the first part of the stroke, but then this rower is rowing really short and doesn't, um, doesn't have a long, a, a long work phase. So you could see that if we look at the stroke length, he will be rowing in a very short number with a good force, but um, he's struggling with his small. What you will see is he jewels per strokes are low because we're missing all that part of the stroke. So technique is not bad, it's just that it's too short. The third one we have here, this one, it will be the opposite as here. So he has the right stroke length, but he's not producing force. So we're missing the whole power high of the power curve. So again, good stroke length, not enough force, we're missing that. Joules per stroke, again, will be low. The, th the fourth curve, that's kind of a typical curve that we could see where there is a problem of coordination of linking the legs with the body on the power application. What we see is that there is a lack of pressure into the flywheel or into the blade in a moment. So what we could see is the rower builds well at the moment he catches the catch, but then as soon as he starts using more the body, he has a lack of pressure and then builds and finishes well. So good stroke length, good force, problem of coordination, he's missing that. 
So that's going to generate obviously a prime on speed on the boat and also we're missing Jules um, workforce. We go to the fifth uh, one. Here we have two problems. What we could see is the rower is kind of shooting the slide. So there is no like a big build at the front of the catch. And then there is no like a direct effect of the legs to the force that he builds and the power curve goes in. And then on the second part of the curve, when it goes down, also it goes in again. So you want always to have the curve pushing out, never pushing in, because that pushing in, what it does is we lose opportunity to make the ball fast. So here we have a problem of pressure on the front and on the back end. On the last curve, we have a good build of pressure, we have a good peak force, we have good stroke length, so the numbers of force are good, stroke length are good, but as we could see, he is not producing pressure on the second part of the stroke. So when he achieves the maximum of force, then he loses pressure. There is a discoordination or there is lack of pressure or there is, um, he uses too much at the front and nothing. And then he doesn't have anything for the second part of the stroke and we're missing this whole part of the stroke. So as I can see here, you can see several examples and you can start trying to see what your power curve looks like and how well you compare with those examples. Let's try to have now an idea of the range of numbers of the range of numbers we should have talking about the power curve of the mountain. So as we know, power curve needs to look like a mountain, always pushing out and pretty proportional. So now the numbers we're going to be talking is, okay, Carlos, what is a right peak force? Well, a right peak force is like the force that you can achieve that is in relationship with your stroke length. So depending on if you're a tall rower or you're stronger, it is going to vary that. But to give you an idea, a good peak force for a male athlete will be between 450 and 550, you know, on regular rowing. And um, in a woman will be, you know, between 400, a little higher of 400. Stroke length, that is the second data. This one we're going to be talking for a male, we're going to be talking, we want to be rowing 130 or higher, and it can go all the way to 160 centimeters, from 130 to 160, 130 is on the shore part. Um, on a female, we can be talking also 125, we don't really want to get 120 under 120, and it can go all the way to 150. Um, obviously, you know, the stronger is the female or the male, the higher the peak force, the, 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 the thicker will need the base because it will make a more proportional mountain, okay? So we have touched about the uh, peak force, the stroke length, and now you will say, okay, Carlos, where do we want a peak on that curve? So that will depend on the boat class you're doing. If you're doing a single, which is a slow boat, or you're doing an A, which is the fastest boat. I will say as a reference, the numbers of peak force are going to go from 35% um, to 50%. The slower the boat, you're going to be over 45, 42% to 50%. The fastest the boat, the eight, as stroke rates, you are going to be 35%. The peak force will change depending on the boat class, who you are, and also the speed or the stroke rate or the resistance you have on the drag, on the machine, on the K factor. But the ranges are the ones I said. And now to finish the last cell, the, the joules per stroke, the area inside of the curve, this is a key number because this is kind of the number that tell us when we have a good uh, peak force and we have a good stroke length, but we have a, a lack of pressure in a part of the stroke, this number doesn't build. And this would be typical, for example, of somebody who shuts the slide or somebody who collapses at the end of the stroke and doesn't produce pressure in the blade and just kind of gets uh, totally crunched at the second part of the stroke, not pushing the blade all the way through. So that number is key that is big and can maintain that curve always pushing up. So the range of this number will be, I will say on a male, on a regular number will be between 700, 650, 700, and all the way to 1,000. Uh, on a female, you could see all the way from 500, 450 um, to 750. You know, like good numbers are above 550, 600. I hope with this video you can analyze your power curve and have a better idea of what you're doing and what can be improved. This is Ben Carlos. Thank you for watching.